hey, I was just uh, looking at some questions that I had, uh, trying to get some answers. I've, uh, I'm looking at getting another telescope and thinking about, well, maybe getting a different camera as well. And the reason I'm thinking this is because it's important to match up the, the focal length of your telescope with the pixel size of your camera. Uh, the goal is to have one to two arc seconds per pixel. How you figure that out is you take the pixel size of your camera and you divide that by the focal length of the telescope and you multiply that by 206.3. And this number uh, gives you the number of arc seconds per pixel that your camera and telescope combination can um, give you. You want this number to be between one and two arc seconds per pixel. If it's less than one arc second per pixel, they usually say that you're oversampling. Your, your pixel sizer is too small. Now it doesn't sound like that should be a problem because it's like, well, you know, that just means it's gonna be a higher resolution. I'll be able to see more detail, right? Well, um, not unless it's a really, really super transparent and clear night are you gonna be able to take advantage of, of uh, oversampling like that. Most of the time, it, it's, it's, you're not getting any more detail. You're just, you just have more pixels for the same object. <laughs> so it's, it's not giving you any more detail. Now, undersampling is, is if uh, this ratio um, and this formula, the pixel size divided by focal length multiplied by 206.3, if that is more than two arc seconds per pixel, then they call that undersampling. And that just means that you're not, you're not going to see um, very good detail. Severe undersampling can result in blocky looking stars. So if you're looking at your images, particularly at the stars, and you see that they're small and round, then you're probably doing just fine. If they're looking blocky, like they're very square looking, then you may be undersampling and you might want to uh, rethink uh, your pixel size or focal length. So for example, this telescope here is an, is an RC8. It's a Ritchie Creighton 8-inch uh, telescope with a focal length of 1,624 millimeters. And, and my camera back here has a pixel size of 4.63 microns. And so simply I take 4.63 I divide by 1,624 millimeters, and then I multiply that by 206.3, and the number I come up with is 0.59, which is less than one, um, and that means that I am oversampling. So one of the advantages of oversampling is that I can easily bin my pictures. I can, while I'm taking pictures, I can set the binning to two by two, for example, and this will cut the width and the, and the height of my, uh, of my pictures down by half in each direction. One of the things I like about um, being able to bin my pictures like that is that they're smaller and they take less time to, to develop, to expose, for example. So where if I'm not binning, I might need to take a five minute exposure of some nebula or a galaxy to get a decent, to get decent signal to noise ratio. But if I do two by two binning, I can cut that down three minutes or so, and I get a nice bright image. Um, and it doesn't look any worse because I'm already oversampling. I'm not getting any more detail by, by not binning. So I've already ordered a Takahashi uh, Epsilon 130D telescope. It's similar in form to a Newtonian telescope, but it has a, a special, specially shaped mirror and, um, and a corrector lens in it, which, which give this an f-stop of 3.3 and uh, a focal length of only 430 millimeters, which means it can see a much larger area of the sky in, in each exposure. And I don't need to say mosaic a lot of pictures together. The problem is, as I've um, discovered with you know, this formula, is that with this new telescope, my camera will be undersampling. Um, the images will come in at like 2.2 arc seconds per pixel, which means that I won't be getting a whole lot of sharp detail. Uh, I'll be able to see wide 
um, and everything. But I won't be able. I won't be taking advantage of of what what really is is possible with the, with this uh, with this new telescope. And um, so I'm tempted to to get another camera. I'm thinking about maybe the ASI 1600mm. The pixel size is smaller than the pixels on this camera. On this one they're 4.63 microns, um, but the ASI 1600 has a pixel size of 3.8 microns. I'm also thinking about the 183mm. Uh, that has a pixel size of 2.4 um, microns, which is really incredible. I mean, I'm, I'm very I'm tempted. It's just that it's a smaller sensor. My images won't capture as much uh, space as as uh, as I would say with this particular camera. So I'm tempted um, to get the 1600 because it's the same. It's roughly the same size as this one. It's a four thirds. Uh, sensor size, and uh, and that should give me some really good detail. Plus, it's monochrome, and uh, I won't be uh, losing resolution because of colors. I realize that there are a lot of other thoughts on this topic um, concerning pixel size and over and under sampling, and there's some really good discussions about it on cloudynights.com. Uh, so I recommend if you're interested in in learning a little bit more to to check out that site. And, uh, and hear what some, uh, some of the experts have to say about it. If you were, for example, interested in imaging uh, planets or something, you wouldn't even worry so much about oversampling at all because you, you want to get down to like 0.2 or 0.3 arc seconds per pixel. And so you're going to put on a, a Barlow lens, you'll want to use a long focal length, and naturally as small of pixels as you can get, um, would, would work just fine so that you can get some, some really good uh, detailed images. As for anything and everything in amateur astrophotography, we are always learning and growing, improving our skills. Uh, so I hope this little discussion has been helpful uh, to some of you, and thanks for watching.